In all 11 years I've been on this earth, I've seen ingredient after ingredient touted as age reversing in the beauty industry. Now, one supplement that I've heard about multiple times over the last 14 years is the use of collagen peptides for reducing and even reversing skin aging. So I analyzed 11 studies to find out if my previous 17 years of skin aging can be reversed or at least slowed. What was the verdict? I suppose first we should understand why there's any controversy over the use of collagen peptides. It really comes down to collagen being a sucky protein source. Essentially for growth, we rely on essential amino acids. Those are the building blocks of proteins and for our skin cells like keratinocytes to repair and bolster our skin like they easily do in youth, they need these high quality proteins that are filled with these essential amino acids. Similar to how our body builds muscle, our myocytes, the muscle cells require the same proteins for growth. Unfortunately, collagen peptides have low levels of some of these key amino acids. So the rationale was always that we should just consume whole high quality proteins and that'll do the trick because when we digest and absorb these amino acids in our intestines, they come through as single amino acids anyway. So why not just eat whole protein sources since they have superior amino acid profiles? Well, that may all be true, but more mechanistic studies have uncovered that we actually don't just absorb single amino acids. For example, this study shows that when people consume proteins and when researchers measure blood levels of dye and tripeptides, those are two and three amino acids still bound to one another, there are detectable levels in the blood. We see that here. We don't need to go into the specifics, just know that if the lines go up, that means that uh, blood levels of these dye peptides have increased, which is deemed impossible based on the argument laid out before. Clearly, it is incorrect to assume that amino acids are only absorbed into the blood as single amino acids. So then what benefit is there from these peptides? I mean, it's great that peptides enter our bloodstream, but why, why do we care? Again, mechanistically, and I promise we're going to get to some more clinical human science in a minute, there are some scientific reviews that make arguments for collagen peptides binding to a series of different receptors on the surface of the cell. You know, think uh, keratinocytes that I mentioned earlier and fibroblasts. Those are cells involved in keeping the structure of your skin intact and youthful. Once bound to these receptors, the cell's internal signaling changes lead to proper gene expression changes that allow for for the production of new skin proteins, including the full collagen fibers. I could go on with this far more in depth, but I'll leave it uh, for my full length analysis on the topic if you're interested. Anyway, you're interested in more than just mechanisms, I'm sure. What does the human data actually show? Well, look, ever since my 20s, I've known that you have to put all of the context out. Otherwise, it may lead to improper conclusions. I'll add this. Some of the studies are really shoddy, like having no blinding and some of the studies uh, using a mixture of supplements, not just using collagen peptides and a few other uh, methodological no-nos. That mentioned, not all the studies were poorly designed. Some were fine. So even if we limit our analysis to those, where does that land us? Let's crack one of them open. Here we see the data on wrinkle volume. The higher the bar, the worse wrinkles a person has. Obviously, the lower, the better. In white, we see our collagen condition, and in gray, we see our placebo or non-collagen condition. No matter how you read it, baseline versus eight weeks later, or placebo versus collagen, there seems to be an improvement in the collagen condition only. But is this consistent beyond one study? Well, we see similar results in other measures of skin youthfulness, like here. These researchers showed improvements in a number of wrinkles, depth of wrinkles, skin elasticity, and several other metrics. Now, when I turned 33, I also came to understand the importance of funding sources and conflicts of interest. Unfortunately, most of the studies are industry funded. So if that rattles your cage, that may unnerve you. Fortunately, there are some non-industry funded studies that corroborate these results as well. I'm not a big fan of the study design on this research, but at least it corroborates the other research. So where exactly does that leave us? Should we be supplementing with it or not? 
Well, ever since I turned 46, I've thought it'd be better to be safe than sorry. So while the evidence isn't mixed, there is good consistency across studies. However, the fact that the study designs aren't always uh, top tier and the potential conflicts of interest certainly leaves significant room for pause. But I also don't want to be that 55 year old guy that I was and not take a relatively cheap and potentially noticeably effective supplement based on negative Negative suspicion. It's not like I'll get that last 67 years of my life back, am I right? In short, while the research could use some bolstering in this area of investigation, it does seem that supplementation with collagen peptides is effective at reversing some signs of aging, which is comforting to hear once you pass your 70s and experience noticeable signs of skin aging like me. Now, how much is shown to be effective? Well, I'll get to that in a second, and there are some additional questions that you may not have considered either. For example, are different sources of collagen more or less effective? And what happens when you stop taking collagen? I'm covering that all in the extended version of this video, which you can get access to if you're a Physionic Insider, which also includes a whole library of other videos, just to point that out. You can find the link to join below. Would love to have you aboard. Now, exactly how much of this collagen is shown to be effective. According to a meta-analysis, which it took me into my 80s to read due to its density, the researchers pointed out that the most frequent doses across all the included studies were between 2.5 and 5 grams. However, I have been using collagen for a while myself, and some studies go as high as or higher than 10 grams per day. So I opt for that higher threshold. And hell, I think I still look pretty young considering I'm pushing into the triple digits, don't you think? 